Thank you, uh, Senator Reid. Uh, thank you all for being here today, and thank you for your service. Uh, you know, I've been in and out as I've attended other committee hearings, and I sort of feel like um, the most important facts for us and the American people to understand are the facts that haven't been said today. And the reason why they haven't been said is that they are largely classified. And the reason that's important is that the American people have no idea, really no idea, about the immensity of the threat in space. And I've made this comment in a classified setting that I wish the American people could be present in this room, not this room, but the skiff, because our adversaries know what they are doing. We know what they are doing. They know we know what they are doing. But the American people have no idea. And so this discussion and debate will have very little interest in the American public. It's carried on in a level of, forgive me, bureaucratic language that most Americans would have trouble seeing an immediacy in their daily lives. But if they were privy to what we hear, and you know it much better than we do, because you live it, I think they'd be pretty alarmed. Uh, and uh, this is not by way of criticism of you, because you're living with the strictures of what is classified and not. But uh, I think we have a, a real obligation to explain to the American people why space is a domain that matters, why the threats there are real and urgent, why they are growing and important. So I think we all agree here that's, that space is an important domain. Um, undersea warfare is an important domain, but we don't have a separate demand for it. Cyber is an important domain, as my colleague uh, and friend the late John McCain used to say. Uh, and so I found very persuasive, Secretary Wilson, what you said in July of 2017. I know it's been quoted to you before this morning, um, and, and others of you, the reasons for your opposition to that separate um, domain or the separate command uh, for the space domain. Um, but I would like to ask, in terms of the the personnel issues that I think are of um, immediate concern to a lot of folks, um, this proposal would exempt space, space Force civilian personnel from Title V rules and protections it would create a new accepted service that is separate from the federal government competitive service or senior executive service. It would create an alarming precedent, I think, that potentially could erode the merit-based civil service within the Pentagon and eliminate the rights of Space Force employees uh, to participate in collective bargaining, for example. There's currently no civilian workforce that is statutorily exempt from collective bargaining rights. Can you tell me, uh, Secretary Shanahan, why that is a part of your proposal? The uh, uh, Title V that you were uh, referencing was based on the discussion we were having earlier around integration with the NRO. That's the, the model that they employ there, and as we th think about the uh, talent management practices that we'll need in the future, we wanted to provision for that. Much like in your uh, you know, reference to the uh, undersea domain, our approach to the systems engineering is the same as the you know, Navy's undertaken. So there are a lot of examples that we're trying to draw from 
that have been successful. That was that was the nature of of that insertion. Would there be protection for whistleblowers in the same way there is throughout the rest of the government? The uh, the baseline that we're coming off of is the existing uh, personnel system. This was to incorporate, you know. In, um, the ability to integrate with the NRO. So I would, you know, I'd have to go back, sir, I'd have to go back and, and confirm that for you. But I If you would, that would yeah. be appreciated. You bet. Um, because uh, based on this proposal, the Secretary of Defense could terminate any Space Force employee, quote, in the interest of the United States, end quote. And as drafted, it says, notwithstanding any other law, which leads me to think that they would be exempted from a lot of other protections of law and could simply be dismissed yeah. whenever you determine it's in the interest of the United States. Yeah, let me let me go back and confirm that that's not our interpretation. Um, my time has expired. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. But I think there are essentially, uh, and I have a lot more, and I'm going to submit them for the record, a lot more questions than answers here. And as uh, others have remarked, uh, each of you has raised objections or reservations or questions in the past, the very recent past, about this idea, which uh, I'm not sure have been fully addressed here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of Chairman Inhofe, Senator Thank you, Mr. Chairman.